uh, growing up on the Marishi, uh, you know, that's part of the part of the uh, summertime conversation, uh, politics, and pro what's good for the province. So, I I, I grew up with that, and um, I, I you know firmly believe that uh, public service and 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 commitment to public safety. In my part, you know, I spent all my life keeping people safe as a as a police officer, and then as a the sergeant at arms in Parliament Hill. Uh, it's uh, innate with me to to be thinking and be concerned of our public and, and giving myself to public service. So uh, this is one last crack of the bat, uh, Dennis, and I'm hoping to hit a home run for New Brunswick. The uh, last meetings we had with the party leaders to try to, Mr. Higgs wanted a mandate from us to uh, proceed for the next two years prior to, uh, before calling election. And we just found that he, what his, plans were and the issues that he wanted to address were just too far sweeping um, for minority government. The people in New Brunswick didn't give him uh, his government uh, a mandate for these issues and essentially he was looking for a you know, majority government power even though he was in minority government with uh, a surrendering of the opposition's roles which we just didn't feel was appropriate nor correct in a, in a democracy and that that is the reason why we're, we're the position that we took bring to the table as the ambassador of Ireland in Canada, like I was in Ireland, but I witnessed all the countries banning glyphosate, uh, Luxembourg, uh, Belgium, uh, Austria, uh, France, Italy, um, uh, transitioning away. Germany just announced that it is uh, transitioning away. So I'm, I'm, I'm able to give that perspective. Like, you know, if countries like Australia and, and all these European countries are doing it. They're doing it for a reason. And uh, they're not just doing it for the sake of doing it. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, there's concerns here. You see the uh, owner uh, of glyphosate has put significant sums of money away for liability. They've already paid out a number of liability cases in the United States. And we see a class action lawsuit here in Canada. But I think, Dennis, for me, this is about our children and our grandchildren. and. Uh, I'm not prepared to take chances or roll the dice uh, uh, on their well-being and the environment that we want to leave them. Um, it's 2020, and I don't believe we should be spraying chemicals in our forest. Yeah, Dennis, listen, uh, you, I want to compliment you on, on identifying the, the issues. Um, just a few weeks ago, I have a friend of mine, he, the bank of the governor of London, of, the United Kingdom, Mark Carney, he's a Canadian, and uh, I knew Mark here in Ottawa, but I was discussing with him just these very issues that you just spoke about, but on the importance of high-speed internet, you know, Mark said to me, like, Kevin, um, New Brunswick was always seen as a rural, isolated area, but Kevin, with COVID-19, the world has become an isolated regional area. And the way the world's going to function going forward is doing what we're doing right now. Uh, as with uh, Zoom, which didn't exist a couple of years ago, uh, is high-speed internet. So he was counseling me that probably the most single important thing that we could do for our province is to ensure that we have high band uh, internet, uh, high-speed internet service across the, across the province. And I, you know, will work and uh, I'm passionate about this that to work with the federal government to find the necessary resources to ensure that the province is blanketed in high speed internet. And, you know, people think of that as a really big challenge, but, you know, I've seen Premier McNeil in Nova Scotia just the other evening and they're 97% of the way there in, uh, in, in Nova Scotia. So we certainly can do it here in, uh, in New Brunswick. Dennis, this is what it's all about. It's about respecting the dignity of people. That this is this is what this conversation is about. And I think you know, man oh man, we're going to have problems with bilingualism. We're going to have all these talks, but at the end of the day, Dennis, it's about respecting the dignity of. And my goal is to bring the problems together so that we can go forward working on this issue. And I know we can do it. Where we, you know, it, it, this is, you know, we can all have these arguments, is it fair, is it right, is it just, or whatever. Yeah. At the end of the day, 
let's let's get at it. We're official bilingual province. Let us be a beacon for our country. Let us be a beacon for the world. Let us show the world that we can do this together. A wonderful conversation. Uh, I'm uh, looking forward to my first political debate tonight on, on yes. TV with, uh, with, uh, with Rogers and uh, I tell no, you. No, it's a non-contact sport, right? <laughs> it's it's a daunting daunting thought. Like all my opponents, uh, my political opponents, you know, they've been at this now for years. I'm mean, Premier Higgs, ten years. I think Mr. Kuhn, likewise. And yeah. I'm a real uh, novice in, on on all this political stuff. But as I've done today, I'm just going to go in there and and speak from my heart and uh, and uh, hope that New Brunswickers have confidence in me and my experiences in life uh, to allow me the privilege of being their next premier. And that way I can bring hope and opportunity, as I say, transform our economy for the good of New Brunswick.